صلى الله عليه وسلم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وصحبه ومن اهتدى بهداه أما بعد One of the beautiful things in Islam is that the feeling of being there for others and one of the most times one of us feels vulnerable is when he falls sick. That is why it's an essential concept in Islam to visit the sick. So the following chapter, when visiting the sick, what to say? Hadith 147, the Prophet ﷺ, whenever he used to visit someone who was ill, he would say, لا بأس طهور إن شاء الله. Never mind. Yani may, this is a dua, may Allah does not make this bad for you. And he says, never mind, may it, that is the sickness, be a purification if Allah wills. So this is a dua. And it's part of the etiquette of visiting sick people to uplift their morals, to be positive to remind them of the reward, to remind them of their soon-to-be recovery. Why? Because this is what people visiting the sick should be doing. Unlike what people may go and say, oh, a relative of mine died with the same illness last year. Or, whoa, man, you look very bad. How are you feeling? You look horrible. All of this is not positive and it's not part of Islam and people should avoid doing this. Also part of the dua, hadith number 148. The Prophet والسلام, used to ask Allah Azza wa Jal and he used to say, العظيم العظيم I ask Allah, the Supreme Lord of the Magnificent Throne, to cure you. This, that is, dua is to be said seven times. As'alullah al-Azim, Rabbil Arsh al-Azim, an yashfiyaka. To say it seven times in the presence of the person who's sick, what will happen? The Prophet told us that whoever says this, and it was not predestined for that sick person to die, Allah will cure him. So say it with conviction, say it with belief, seven times. Should we say it so that the patient would hear it? The answer is yes. This throws confidence in his heart that there are people who, uh, who are making dua for him and who are actually asking Allah for his uh, uh, help. The following chapter, the excellence of visiting the sick. There is great deal of reward at the sight of Allah Azza wa Jal when you visit the sick. So, what is it? قال صلى الله عليه وسلم إذا عاد الرجل أخاه المسلم مشى في خرافة الجنة حتى يجلس فإذا جلس غمرته الرحمة فإن كان غدوة صلى عليه سبعون ألف ملك حتى يمسي وإن كان مساء صلى عليه سبعون ألف ملك حتى يصبح The Prophet tells us على السلام if a man visits his Muslim brother it is as if he walks reaping the fruits of paradise until he sits. Imagine I leave my home and I go to my sick Muslim brother to visit him. The distance I'm traveling from my home to his home or to the hospital as if I'm reaping the fruits of paradise because I am doing a great deal of good deeds. And this continues until I sit. And when he sits, he's showered in mercy. And if this was in the morning, 
then 70,000 angels will send their prayers upon him until the evening. So they will make dua for you. And if this was in the evening, then 70,000 angels would send their prayers upon him until the morning. For what? For half an hour visit to your sick Muslim brother who you just visit him for the sake of Allah and to make dua for him and to make him feel good about the suffering he's undergoing. Look at the great rewards and hasanat and good deeds that Allah gives to you for such a trivial job that we may think of skipping and not doing. The following chapter is the supplication of the sick who has renounced all hope of life. First of all, Muslims should not be despair. But this dua is suitable for someone who feels that his death is inevitable and near. So we all get sick. But some time in the day, we feel so sick that most likely it's going to be our last hour. So what to say? Well, this is what the Prophet used to, well, he did not used to. He said it once when he felt that it is his dying hour. Allahumma ghfir li warhamni wa alhiqni bil rafiq al a'la. He said, O oh Allah, forgive me, have mercy upon me, and unite me with the highest companions. Who are the highest companions? These are, as in Surah uh, 4, chapter Surah An Nisa, verse 69. Whoever obeys Allah and the Messenger, there will be with the prophets, the Siddiqeen, the martyrs, and the righteous. So these are the highest companions. So when one feels his death is near, he asks Allah Azza wa Jal for forgiveness, he asks Allah Azza wa Jal for mercy, and he asks Allah to admit him to paradise with these righteous predecessors of ours so that we would have eternal happiness. May Allah grant me and you such a status in paradise. Ameen. هذا والله أعلم ونسبة العلم إليه أسلم وصلى الله وسلم وبارك على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين صلى الله على محمد صلى الله على محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم آه